there are any questions in the room? I think we have 20 minutes. Yeah, there are a couple. So if you can bring a mic, somebody, please. So I, I see two. Um, there's one gentleman in the Monsieur Fouché and another gentleman in the, in the back. Excuse me. Um, yeah, if you can raise your hand. Oh, it's, oh, can you give it to Monsieur Fouché, please? Là, devant. <laughs> Sorry, next time. Stand. Sorry. Okay. A former ambassador and a géographe uh, de renom. <laughs> a short question to Jean-Claude. Do you see an alternative candidate on the side of the Democratic Party who would be the equivalent of Nikki Haley for the Republican Party? Thank you. Short answer to your question, governor of California or governor of Michigan? That would be Gavin Newsom? The governor of California? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So there's a question over there, uh, the lady with the mic. And I think the young man, want, you had a question too, right? Okay. Thank you. Uh, I'm Daniel Landler from Paris, Sorbonne. Um, I'm dumbfounded that none of you ever mention the role of social media and the role of artificial intelligence and the amplification of well-known uh, propaganda uh, tricks. I mean, uh, the, 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 the journalist from Japan said people are immune to uh, rational arguments. Not so much, I'm not so convinced. They're not immune to propaganda when it's done in a certain industrial way. Anyway, whatever your opinion are, is on this important and well-known topic, uh, what, what you think about it and what you think the, what, what is going to be the role of these uh, AI-powered uh, propaganda systems for the coming elections. Well, this is the perfect timing for your question because this was actually one of my questions, but I'm very glad you brought the topic. So what the power of generative, generative AI do you think, like, for instance, a politician should have some kind of uh, transparency during the elections, saying, now this is our roadmap, we're not going to use AI, or if we use AI, that's how we're going to do it. Uh, is this something that should come up now in the political discourse and campaigning? So maybe, uh, Mr. Akita? Um, yes, I think that uh, uh, it is a very, very serious problem, and I think there should be some uh, restriction. Um, because the situation is that uh, political landscape is polarized, but also, especially in the US, I can feel that there is a huge polarization of media itself. So when I turn on the CNN, I listen, you know, I watch some t news program, but when, then I turn to uh, Fox News, it's totally parallel world, and then I switch to another one. So I think that uh, even objective uh, broad TV program uh, provide different angle. So uh, without any restriction on the free flow of information in uh, unrestricted uh, cyberspace, it is very, it will create, amplify very chaotic uh, situation and it can be easily disrupted or manipulated by some actor. So, Igor, I'd like to have your take on this because, you know, there's a lot of accusations against Russian trolls during the elections, especially in 2016 in the yeah. States. What do you answer to this question? Because it's a real fear. Yeah, since um, the official election is overly organized and fully controlled, then in the mass social media, you have a lot of different uh, uh, opinions, some of them very exotic. Some of them goes a little bit, you know, uh, beyond uh, reasonable, etc., etc. Uh, the only effort which I know of during the last election, when opposition called for voting on anybody, be it communist, socialist, or extreme uh, rightist, 
but who are against the ruling party, Единая Россия. Okay? So this experiment ended up in 1%, 1.5% of the result. You see, so from this point of view, when the country is organized like we are organized, and when the election is controlled the way we are controlled, then this effort of social media, a lot of noise, no, no uh, e efficient uh, electoral result. That's well, but, number one. But for number two, interference. number two, number two, a lot of people left <coughs> our country after, especially young, productive, creative, left after the beginning of, of the conflict with Ukraine. They are split altogether. We were discussing with some of them today. They are split and they don't have unity at all. They keep accusing each other in all kinds of mistakes rather than mobilizing for one candidate who would represent a real opposition. Well, maybe, Isabel, you could address us as a journalist when you cover foreign elections. The fact that now we have to be eager of so many fake news going around that the elections and the freedom of speech is really manipulated. Uh, it's making it very complicated for journalists to work. Uh, what do you think of it? Well, it's m one more argument to go uh, on the ground and not to cover elections through social um, a result, but uh, I mean, I think it's one of the uh, weaknesses of uh, democracy. Countries like Russia and China have been uh, investing for years in warfare and uh, cyber uh, initiatives. Um, the elections in, in Europe uh, and the, in the States have been hacked for uh, for years, and you have this. Uh, I mean, Europe is is just. Uh, uh, realizing it, uh, you know, for now or two or three years, but the ch I mean, uh, the, the changes come v very slow. For years, we have considered that in the cyber area, for example, the, um, our purpose as the democratic countries was not uh, to have an attack department in the cyber area, but only a defense department. So I think we have 10 or, and I mean, for, for it's, it's also, um, we have not in, in, in invested in this area for uh, also for, for moral reasons, you, you know. Uh, so it's very difficult today to be, I mean, to, to, to be if, uh, to, to protected with efficiency. I, I just come back from, from Taiwan, and, and this is very interesting because Taiwan is uh, subjected uh, each, during each elections uh, by um, cyber attack from China, um, influences through the North medias Korea. of the Kuomintang and the, you know, f paid by, by, by China. And this year, they succeeded to, uh, to low down the level of uh, fake news by um, forbidding the, um, I mean, you, you know, the, the system was that China was influencing um, the Taiwanese people through, uh, by investing in the religious um, uh, institutions. So um, Taiwan succeeded to, to cut the, the transfer of money coming from China to Taiwan. So this year, you have a decrease of, uh, I think, 40 or 50 percent of the Chinese influence directly in the, in, the, in the Taiwanese influence. So this is an example, but we are, we are far away, you know, uh, of what should be needed to do. I know that in France, I mean, we're just starting, and you said we have a very defensive position yeah. right now, yeah. not offensive at it's all. It's a taboo, it's a taboo. Boy, it's, um, so I know there was another question. Uh, I, I don't know if you have a microphone. Oh, and there's one just... Okay, go ahead. Michael, <laughs> does it work? Yes. Um, John Andrews here from The Economist. A question for Jean-Claude. Um, is it plausible that uh, Joe Biden can somehow persuade Kamala Harris with a good job offer not to be his running mate? And if so, does he need to find a black woman as her replacement? Um, and clearly Gavin Newsom would not be such a woman. And if you take the Republican side, um, do, do you, 
do you think Nikki Haley is actually basically running to be Trump's uh, running mate? Okay. Uh, <clears throat> I think it's too late for Biden to replace Kamala Harris. He's made the announcement Kamala Harris will be running with Biden if Biden is the nominee, as it likely to happen for the Democratic Party. So uh, if Biden wanted to replace Kamala Harris, it would have been done months ago, essentially when he announced his candidacy. So she's the candidate for vice president and people, and this is frankly speaking, one of the arguments that the Republican will be and should be using. When you look at Biden, the way he behaves, what he says, the way he expresses himself, people have to think that Kamala Harris is likely to be the next president. I wish him well, but Kamala Harris is likely to be the president that the Democratic Party will elect if they vote for Biden. That's number one. Now, <clears throat> you uh, asked the question. I had the privilege of meeting twice Nikki Haley when she started the campaign during uh, fundraising events in New York. And I had conversation one to one with her. And she said it very, very publicly. She said, I'm running for president. I'm not running to be the vice president. And I truly believe her. I think, let's frank, you know, she's 53, 54. If she doesn't make it this time, she has a very good chance of being the nominee for the next election. Four years from now, she will be 57, 58. So uh, I, she, she, Trump is likely to be the nominee of the Republican Party. Trump will obviously choose someone to be his vice president. Uh, good luck to the person that who's going to be chosen by Trump, because uh, this is this election is a toss-up. I, I have absolutely. If you look at the polls, you know, forget about the primaries. If you look at the polls, it's really very very close, and, and so many things can happen between now and the election, particularly for Trump, also who facing so many issues. And Biden, you know, inflation, the southern border, the problem with the, the family. So the fact of the matter is that, frankly speaking, Trump thinks only about himself and uh, he doesn't care. He will have a vice president candidate. It's very unlikely to be Nikki Haley or, or Ron DeSantis for that matter. It will be somebody else. It could be a governor uh, of uh, the state of, I'm not sure if it's, South, uh, I forgot her name, you know what I mean? The governor of North Dakota or South Dakota was a woman, uh, not an African-American, uh, it's a white woman, but she's a governor and she's very popular in some conservative movement. I forgot her name, uh, skipped my mind, but I'm sure you can find her. I think she's the governor of South Dakota. Okay, so we have to look for Nico Halley, but four more years. I think there was another question, uh... That's what I think, yeah. Yeah, that's what you said, yeah. Um, I saw somebody else, yeah, some hands are raised in the back, please. Uh, somebody's gonna bring you a mic. Excel. Hello, I'm Axel Gilden from the French magazine L'Express. Uh, to follow up on this question, is there, a, is there a scenario where Joe Biden steps down before summer? And um, the conven it happens the old way, In the, the convention decides for a new candidate, or uh, Joe Biden has to, to he's impeached because he's, he's sick or something, what happens then? Another scenario for Biden? Uh, impeachment, I don't believe it. I mean, uh, impeachment is not for sickness. If, if it's impeachment, it's it, the Democrat are able to link the fundraising of his family. Uh, there's two checks have been produced where he received 10% of amount of money uh, received by his brothers and his son, but it was marked loan repayment. So, I mean, I don't, Biden is not going to be impeached. There's not going to be enough evidence to, and I, I'm not sure if he's really corrupted. I mean, the family has been trying to use his name for benefiting by getting money from uh, shady characters in foreign countries, whether it's Romania, uh, Russia, China, and so on and so forth. They've been 
uh, all people do that in the political scene in the United States. They've done it to an extent that's unprecedented, but uh, that's not going to be enough. No, the only thing that could prevent him from being the nominee would be his health. If he had a major health issue, he may have to step down, but that's the only reason why I would see him. Otherwise, he's going to, you know, there's some, I just learned yesterday, for example, that, you know, you have to register in every state for the primaries and so on. He's not even registering for primary in New Hampshire. He's taking for granted that he will be the nominee of the party. So only a, a significant health issue would prevent him from being the nominee. But that, that's what usually happens when you have an incumbent president. He, you know, he doesn't go through the primary process. Uh, Alors, you want to follow up? And I think somebody else has a question behind you. If you just, can pass the mic afterwards. Just to clarify, it. I just yeah. meant impeached by his health. I didn't mean impeached for uh, judicial yeah. reason, <laughs> reasons. No, 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 no. Okay, no, no, I take it. I take it. And my answer to you is that it, that's the only reason why he wouldn't stand if, if he had a major health issue. And in the back, there's another question. Yes, hello, Nicolas Pio from Tilt Capital. Thank you very much, very insightful. Maybe a question drawing on Ms. Lasser's point on continuity. Um, is it correct to read what is happening right now in 2024 being maybe a step in this direction that there is a, I would say, a continuity towards a, a big move globally towards far-right extremism? which is in fact fueled by fake news and social media, etc. How do we get out of that? To be frank, as a citizen, European citizen, I'm extremely concerned <coughs> by the fact that every time we move and we see a scandal in the, in the sense of manipulation, it goes in the direction of far-right extremism. And it's very hard to fight on a, on a rational basis the arguments of this, uh, of this trend. Thank you. Well, the fact that there's more and more uh, votes for populist uh, uh, candidates in, in general. Each time you have a new scandal, it brings out more nationalism and populism. But it, it's, it's often true, but it's not always the case. Like what we saw in Poland, after some years of government, uh, the opposition was, was able to, to find another path. So, I mean, we have to be confident in, in people who are voting and, you know, who are able to, uh, to choose differently. But it's true. And if you look at Europe, for instance, I mean, a lot of nationalistic countries have been building up and we have a lot of governments and coalitions now with the far right. And that never happened before. So is this something that you're concerned about, this movement towards more nationalism that we see in elections? If I don't betray your thoughts. No. Oui, alors, okay. uh, well, uh, Monsieur Akita oh. and then Isabelle. So, uh, I worry more about the fragmentation of the global world order uh, rather than uh, rising, nas rising nationalism in each, in, each, in each individual state is a very serious problem, but uh, I worry more about the, you know, uh, defragmentation of the international system through the next year's series of election is more serious. And uh, maybe people sp speak about multipolar, multipolar, but the polar means you have a polar, right? US, Europe, and maybe China or hopefully Japan or India, polar. But the maybe world will be more like a multi-universe Without the without a strong polar, mm -hmm. but the universe mm -hmm. universe coexist together mm -hmm. without any order. Mm -hmm. That is, that is more dangerous. And and that was a big concern of the two round tables we had this morning that are really interesting. Saying it was it was time those elections are so time to pull together and find out what are our common objectives and what is the world order you need to rebuild on the economic side but also on the yeah. political side. Isabel, you no, no, but uh, on, the, on the question of uh, disinformation, I, I do uh, really agree with you. It's really frightening because uh, what we see today is um, each time when you have two parts, it's uh, just, I mean, the disinformation has uh, absolutely, uh, is overwhelming. I mean, the, the, the facts today are less important as the, uh, as a, the, the perception, the emotion, 
and the ideology. We, we, I mean, we just have the, the last example is, is absolutely obvious between Israel and Hamas. I mean, depending the, the place where you are in the world, you just don't see the same images. And um, so the, the, it, it, it's very, very hard to, to counter disinformation, but also uh, it's very, very hard to... Um, I mean, to, 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 to counter the, um, the rapidity of the information, uh, the um, emo emotion which is uh, uh, driven by the in, the, in the social area and, uh, and on the internet. You, you, it's not audible anymore. And of course, this leads to more extrem extremism in each part of the world and on every subject. Well, thank you. Uh, we've touched a lot of ground, a lot of different topics, and it was uh, very interesting. Thank you very much all for being here this afternoon, and thank you to our panelists.